Well, at school I had no plans what I wanted to be for the future. Uh, I knew I was always good at maths and physics and academic subjects like that. I'd considered being a pilot or an accountant. My dad wanted me to go into law, um, but I didn't see myself as a lawyer. It wasn't until um, my university days um, where I was introduced to medical physics. I did a, a physics degree and amongst all the boring quantum mechanics and thermal physics and mathematics, there was a module called Physics in Medicine, which I thought I'd give a try. And that really opened my eyes to how physics could be applied to the common good of helping patients. How your knowledge of quantum mechanics and radiation and nuclear physics can be used in a hospital environment. I work in the Physics and Nuclear Medicine Department now at City Hospital Birmingham and we inject radioactive traces into patients. So a knowledge of nuclear physics and how the radiation interacts with matter and how we get our scans, it's very important. How we get the best quality scan, how we get the best out of our patients. It's all physics and it's all, it's all a knowledge. In the Department of Physics and Nuclear Medicine, we inject our patients with radioactive traces and these traces go somewhere in the body and we want to see where they go and where we have uptake for diagnostic purposes. So when the patients are injected with these radioactive traces, they, the tracer is giving off gamma radiation. And this radiation is then imaged by a special piece of equipment called a gamma camera. It's similar to an MRI scanner or a CT scanner that you've probably already heard of except this scanner is designed to detect the gamma rays coming out of the patient. Shortly I'll show you something called a myocardial perfusion scan. The scan we're looking at here is called a myocardial perfusion scan. Myo means muscle, cardial means the heart, and perfusion means blood supply. So in this scan we're looking at the blood supply to the heart. In nuclear medicine we inject our patients with radioactive traces, and these traces will go somewhere in the body. Uh, this tracer goes to the heart, which is what we want to look at, but it also goes to other organs. This is the heart at the top, these are the kidneys at the back, this is the small bowel at the bottom, and this is the liver. We're not interested in these other organs, we're only interested in the heart. What we'd prefer to do is take slices of the heart, which is what we see in this screen here. These are slices through the heart muscle, going from the tip to the heart, back towards the atria. And this is a normal scan. A normal scan looks like donuts at the top and horseshoes at the bottom. And what we're looking at is whether these horseshoes or donuts have any bites taken out of them. These donuts are perfect circles and the horseshoes are perfect U-shapes. And this is normal. If we compare it to an abnormal scan, we can see that to the right hand side the donut is incomplete. This part of the heart to the right has abnormal blood supply. Now what we have to do is play a game of spot the difference. Is this picture the same as this picture? In this example we can see that the picture at the top is different to the picture at the bottom. The bottom picture looks normal, it is a completed donut. This is important to the cardiologist because if the bottom picture is better than the top picture, they can repair it with surgery. They go through the femoral artery in the groin, they blow up the diseased artery, and they put a wire cage in to resupply that part of the heart with blood. Looking at this screen now, this software attempts to quantify the size of the defect. The software thinks that this part of the heart is abnormal, which is what we saw before from the pictures. And at rest it thinks it's almost normal. The picture at the bottom shows us the difference. This is called the reversibility. And again, if there's no reversibility, there's nothing the surgeons can do about it. We can also take pictures as the heart beats. Here we can see the heart beating and we get important information that we can give to the cardiologists. We can tell them the size of the heart at its largest size, 60 mils here, and the size at the smallest, 19 mils. We can tell them a very important number called the ejection fraction. This is the percentage of blood expelled from the heart each heartbeat. Here it's 69% which is normal. 
This information will go back to the patient's cardiologist and they will decide what to do with it, whether to intervene surgically or whether the patient will benefit from medication.